Hey, up right, the EICMA in Milan today. The uh, Himalayan 450 has finally been officially announced and launched. Now, I think I know the reasons for this, but I won't speculate. Um, Royal Enfield have not been as secretive about this bike as they have about previous models. Instead of the usual radio silence and occasional grainy blared spare shot, we've had quite a lot of, you know, very open and public media content about this bike. It's been a very different kettle of fish to all the previous launches. And to be honest, I wasn't really bothered about this bike until I saw the launch this morning. And wow, what an absolute cracker the new Himalayan 450 is. Now, I know it's supposed to be pronounced Himalayan, but I've always known it as the Himalayan because I'm from East Yorkshire and that's how we pronounce it. I quite like the styling of the old Himalayan. It was that sort of rugged, two-wheeled Land Rover look. A bit of a Marmite bike for a lot of people, I know. Although it doesn't seem to have hurt the sales over the years. As you can see from these images, the Royal Enfield's ugly duckling reputation has now blossomed into a beautiful swan. More curvaceous and up-to-date, sporting Royal Enfield's long-awaited liquid-cooled single-cylinder double-overhead cam four-valve engine. With a cubic capacity of 451.65 cc's. Now, this is an important engine for Royal Enfield, for a start, it's their first liquid-cooled engine, and if other spare shots that we've seen are to be believed, this engine is also going to be put into other motorcycles in the future, more notably a sort of interceptor or hunter type platform. And I think it would be really nice if we were to see a Scram 450 in the not too distant future. This engine produces a cat's whisker over 40 horsepower at 8,000 revs. It's similar to another well-known brand's entry into this sort of market with their single cylinder 400cc single. I'm sorry to bring that up, but these comparisons are going to be made and it'll save me a lot of time in the comments section. Where this new 450cc engine does win, however, is in the torque stakes. Developing slightly more torque, a thousand revs lower in the rev range. 40 newton meters at 5,500 revs. So it seems to me that the Himalayan engine has been tuned for very tractable, usable mid-range torque which is perfect for road use, especially when you're touring long distances. Now, what I presume are the um, official homologated fuel efficiency figures for this bike given in the press release are 3.59 litres per 100 kilometres, which, if my calculations are correct, uh, relates to about 80 miles or slightly over 80 miles per imperial gallon. And if you live in the States with those quirky little um, US gallons. That's 66.61 miles to the gallon. And with a 17 litre fuel capacity, um, that's getting on for 300 miles between Phillips, which if I'm correct is impressive and exactly what you need for a tourer. So what about the rest of this bike? Without a doubt, the original Himalayan DNA is still very much present in this motorcycle. It's unmistakably the Himalayan, but it's been updated. Cab side weight is 196 kilograms. I know a lot of people are going to roll their eyes because they think that's too heavy. Don't judge it just yet, it all depends where the centre of gravity is. Maximum payload, including rider, is 198 kilograms, so plenty of capacity there for the rider, a pillion, and luggage. Now, standard seat height is 825 millimeters, but it is adjustable and can be sort of jacked up if you like to 845 millimeters. Now, if that's too high for you, there is a low seat option, 805 millimeters 
adjustable to 825 millimeters. We also have 200 millimeters of suspension travel front and rear by upside down telescopic forks at the front and a monoshock at the back. Now, from what I can gather, there are going to be three variants of this motorcycle, uh, each with their own different colour schemes. The base, the pass and the summit levels. The variant that you're looking at now being the summit variant level in Hanley Black. Now, I'll go into full details about the differences between the different model levels in a future video when hopefully the prices will be released for the UK. Now, also with the summit level, we have the Kamet White variant, which I think might be my favourite. Moving over to the Pass variant in Slate and Poppy Blue. And then staying with the Pass variant, we have the Slate and Himalayan Salt colourway. Then finally we have the base variant with just one colour option this time, which Royal Enfield call Casa Brown. It looks like a kind of a top or stone colour. Now it might just be the photographs but this looks to be a satin or semi matte finish. Now, hopefully, I'll get to swing a leg over one of the press bikes in the not-too-distant future, and then we'll get a chance to sort out the meat and potatoes of what this bike is all about. But on face value, it looks to me like Royal Enfield might have another runaway success on their hands. It's been a common theme with Royal Enfield over the last three or four years. We're gradually seeing them up specification, quality, and prestige and it looks to me like Royal Enfield's new Himalayan 450 is not going to be an exception to that trend. It seems to me that the once humble faithful Royal Enfield Himalayan 400 has now metamorphosized from a hard working cart horse to a thoroughbred stallion. That is undoubtedly going to come with a price rise but how big of a price rise, we don't know quite yet. But rest assured, I'll be one of the first to let you know as soon as the prices are released. Right, once again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and my other videos and in doing so helping to support this channel. I really do appreciate it. I would also appreciate it if you would leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. Now, if you do subscribe, please hit the notification bell and ensure that your notifications are enabled on your channel account. I will, of course, be back on Friday, so until then, please, ride safely, and I'll see you soon.